Have you ever thought about making a podcast? Yeah, we're doing it. I know I have. You get it? <laughs> so, you know, when we were thinking about putting out a podcast, we wanted to make sure that we had all of the, you know, software things that we needed to record. We wanted to have all the things that we needed to edit. And it seemed like there was a lot of different things and a lot of different places. But what we found was... Uh, Spotify for podcasters and that was really what we needed to open the door to all of those different things they have it all right I'm a technology dummy but with the Spotify for podcasters you can use it from your phone or you can use it from your computer so even if you travel or you're on the road you can still do your podcast if you want to go interview somebody at their house you can do that with your phone which is yeah. super cool um and then you know you can distribute your podcast on the it's called rebranded but it was anchor before and now it's spotify for podcasters yeah nice you can also do video podcasts Ooh. um have conversations with your fans you can take it to the next level even and have a q a or Ooh, polls um so with that you can also earn money um doing ads like this one Ooh. best of all it's totally free Totes free. Totes free. So don't miss out. If you have a voice and you want to get it out there to the public, don't be scared. Just get on to <laughs> Spotify.com slash podcasters. Or you can download the Spotify for Podcasters app on any app store. So Spotify.com slash podcasters to get started putting your crazy voice out there on the internet. And getting fringy. That's Do right. it. Stay fringy, my peeps. Do it. everybody welcome back to that's so fringy podcast i'm rick i'm Kristen, and i'm bethany and we are here with another fringy morsel yeah for your listening pleasure we're hoping to bring you another uh current event tonight and uh the one that we decided to talk about this week um we're pretty sure you've heard about this is the shooting in Nashville, and this uh, was uh, pretty big in the news mm-hmm. since it happened. So, I mean, it's this isn't a new thing. Everybody kind of has this pretty cemented in their brain, the, the details, but we wanted to just kind of tease out some of the uh, intricate things that we saw uh, to help you maybe see things a little differently when you're looking at the news. So... Kristen, if if you want to um, tell us a little bit about what you heard, and then we'll kind of go around and talk to Bethany about what she heard, and then I'll talk about what I heard and what I saw. So go ahead. Well, I'm sure most of you are aware there was six victims. There was three children and three faculty members that were gunned down um, at the Covenant School, which is a private Christian school. Um, it looks like the school has a little over 200 students and 40 to 50 staff members. Um, so that's the basic, the basic story. The person that went in there and did this was they identified as a trans. So they were a woman to a man, mm-hmm. correct? Mm-hmm. I think so. What was the name that I, I know when, so when I first read this article, I, I didn't see a name or or anything like that. They it was still fresh, and uh, they didn't know really who it was that had done it. But uh, now we have a name, and we have a, a yeah. little more information there. Yeah, I think her name was Audrey Hale, and she had been a student at that school years prior. Mm-hmm. Correct. She's in her like mid, was in her mid twenties, so she's been out of school for a bit. And this was a preschool through sixth grade, I think. Yeah. School. 
I think so. And she, I think some recent, I think actually just today it came out um, that she was getting some counseling mm-hmm. by one of the pastors at the church who was a previous teacher of hers. And his daughter, his only daughter, was one of the, the nine-year-olds that was unfortunately killed. Mm-hmm. I didn't hear that. Actually. Yeah. Just came out today. I, I mean, who knows if it's all true or factual Mm -hmm. that's the hard part i have with With the media stories that come out like this is you know what's what's the real truth i know we've kind of picked out some interesting facts that we've seen um and we just did an episode recently on false flags and kind of what those entail and in in a false flag real people do die and that's something absolutely That I think, I don't know if we super touched on that, but there are definitely terrible, tragic events that happen as much as it may be set up by people we don't see every day. There are tragic events, obviously, that come from it. So we're not saying that these people didn't die, but we are saying that it's kind of suspicious. Right. And the the false flag part comes into play with that shifting of blame. So... You know, who who is really in charge and pulling the strings and all of this stuff? Because, it, I, I mean, if you remember our, our episode on this in Cuba, it, the Cuban citizens and the American citizens were victims. It, mm-hmm. I mean, there's, there's absolutely real victims in this. But it's really hard to tell from the media because you've got, in my opinion, one side yelling about all of this stuff and the other side yelling about all of this stuff. And I think a lot of times people forget in the middle is all the victims and they're, they're real people and they're real families. And it's very tragic and it's really hard as a, as a mother, as a parent to make sense of all of this stuff and, and how, you know, I know a lot of people go, how does God let stuff like this happen? And, you know, while I can sit here and go, well, he has a reason and you know, his, his, thoughts are higher than our thoughts that doesn't lend any comfort to the victims and that's that's the hard part that I think we all have to deal with wrestle with Mm -hmm. yeah I know right after it happened you know we we have a group text with the three of us and it, it came up in in topic and it was immediately like just weird like the information that and that came out initially was just weird and it it automatically jumps to gun control well we have to ban assault rifles and and do all this that i this is probably an unpopular opinion here but i think the real issue is dealing with the mental health disorder Mm -hmm. behind the the shooter you know if this trans woman man whatever was taking any kind of hormones. I mean, does anybody think about a woman taking testosterone and what's that that is doing to the chemical right. balance of their brain? Like that's in my opinion, that's the real yeah. issue. Well, and coming from the the nursing world, you know, we've seen a lot of it doesn't take much as far as hormones to get out of whack to to really mess a person up. I mean, mm-hmm. there it's really a very intricate and, you know, god-made a perfect system. And so then here we go starting to mess with this perfect system that God has made. And then we wonder why depression, anxiety, you know, all of this stuff is on the rise. Well, we're fiddling with and messing with something that we have no business messing with. You know, it's like Rick has an example. He can probably tell better than me about, you know, using an iPhone. Do you remember that? And if you use it the way it's not intended, it's just nothing. Oh, yeah. It's like a paperweight. If you take it and, and, and mess with all the settings and stuff in your iPhone, it's a cool piece of technology, but it's not going to work right. Yeah. You know, when, when I talk about gun control, and I'm very pro Second Amendment, and, that, and that's because I'm an American and I believe in the Constitution. And I'm not asking anybody else to to say that for themselves. I'm I'm saying that's what I believe as an American is that we have a constitutional right Mm -hmm. to keep and bear arms in the event, not that we want to go hunting, but that we um, have a fascist dictatorship trying to rise up and and control us and 
and and hold us down because the whole reason that the uh, that America was started was to have freedom to to freedom of religion freedom of choice to to be who you wanted to be to have your own land and be left alone mm-hmm. and part of that is having um, protection for yourself and your land because I mean we would all be dumb to think that nobody's going to come and try to take what you have I mean we we know that that's the human nature and so when I explain gun control to people I say it's like having your iPhone and when you have your iPhone and you're doing everything with it the way that it's designed the way that it, you know the people the engineers in the factory designed it to work it's going to work just perfectly fine but if you start messing with the settings or you go to try to jailbreak your phone and try to change all of these different things you're going to have a broken system and it's going to become a brick and that brick is going to be a useless piece of machinery that otherwise could be an iPhone. And Mm -hmm. so when you take guns and you use them out of the context that they were supposed to be used for, which is protection, Mm -hmm. that's what guns are supposed to be for. They're not for going out and killing innocent people or or even in my opinion going to war with all of these other countries and 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 bringing violence uh even though I was a marine I'm not really a big proponent of violence I think that people should just stay to themselves and be free mm-hmm. and I'm cool with that and but I do understand though and I am sensitive to the fact that there are people in this world that are violent by nature Whatever their background is or whatever got them to that place, they're violent by nature. And so they've decided to use these guns that were intended for protection because most people that I know have their guns for protection. Mm -hmm. I don't I don't have I don't have friends that bought these guns to go murder people. Right. You know what I mean? And so when Biden comes out and one of the first things that he says, well, besides chocolate chip ice cream don't get me started (laughs) on the ice cream Mm -mm, me neither stuff Mm -hmm. if anybody thinks that this guy is a real president like come on take another look (laughs) this guy is a joke however getting back on topic there there is a push for gun control we've seen this for a very long time Mm -hmm. and it's not new they've they've and and they don't they can't even speak intelligently about the guns that were used. Right. I mean, if you if I was a and this is just me, if I was writing up legislation about gun control, I would use actual terms that people that own guns use so that they would understand what it is that we're talking about. Mm-hmm. But when you just use a blanket a blanket statement like assault weapons, nobody knows what you're talking about. There are so many different types, brands, styles of weapons out there. And so the first thing that comes out of this clown's mouth is that we should ban, this is why we need to ban assault weapons and brings it political as they always do. And it's like, what are we talking about? We're talking about a a young person that is struggling with their identity that is probably on medication, hormones, as you were saying, all these different things. They were going to a counselor, and then they went and shot up that school that they went to and the child of her counselor. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, why are we blaming the guns? This is a clear and concise, open and shut pretty much case on the fact that this person has some issues going on and that's okay i want to be sensitive to the fact that i don't care if this person's trans Mm -hmm. or what they want to be i just got done talking about freedom i want people to be free to do whatever they want to do but i want everybody to understand that there was some turmoil going on in this person and it's not the gun Right. Well, I think that they put out a thing. So she had a manifesto that had other other schools, I think, that or other plans, we'll say. And and one of them on there 
that a comment that she had made that leaked out was that she chose that school because of their lack of security measures. They were an easy target, which I know churches in general are seen as an as an easy target um, with you know these types of things. But that was that was her intention going there was that there was she was going to have less pushback because they didn't have the security measures in place, mm-hmm. which brings up a whole topic of. Schools not having, you know, our school here, do, I don't even think they have a resource officer anymore. Like, they used to have a officer posted at the school. Like, it was it was part of the gig, you know. You had a – and, I mean, it's funny. This is a funny – off, a little off topic, but not really. So we went to a Miranda Lambert concert a few years ago, and Rick had his weapon, you know, he carries all the time. And so he's got a concealed carry permit, had his weapon – and we get all the way, so it's a bit of a hike to get to the arena, you know. So we get there, and Ding Dong over here forgot that he had his weapon still on him, and they make you go through like a metal detector to get in. And so we were like, and I'm not supposed to have it in there, but I forgot. Oh that no, because I, I wear it all the time because I for protection, as we talked right. about. And I forgot that I had had it, so I then I had to go lock it in the car and make yeah, sure it was Yeah, we had to secured. hike all the way back. So then we get back up there, and as I go through the metal detector, I have a vape pen in my pocket. They wouldn't even <laughs> let me take my vape pen in. I had to throw it away because you're not allowed to have it in there. And I'm like, okay, so this is the security protocol. We have to go to a country music concert. Mm-hmm. And we have no security at these schools. Yeah. It's pretty wild. Also, when has banning anything ever actually worked? Like, our drug, the drug problem right now is Uh out of this world. I mean, granted, it's being trafficked in by the CIA, but that's besides the point. I mean, we've we've banned, you know, banned marijuana for the longest time, and... For why? For what? It didn't work. There were yeah. still growers growing it. Yeah. And now they've, you know, now that it's legal, all of these big conglomerates came in and took over and shut down the small business farmers. And mm-hmm. it's, I just, I don't understand the the well, banning of it. And this, so I have this, this graph that I found that says mass public shootings in a gun-free zone from 1998 to June of 2019. So, a whopping 89% of these mass shootings happened in a gun-free zone. There's only 11% of these mass shootings that happened where people were allowed to carry their weapons. Mm -hmm. So that should show you something just in the numbers there that people pick places that have less security on purpose. Mm -hmm. So banning the guns, all you're doing is banning people from being able to protect themselves. Yeah. If somebody does pull out a weapon, mm-hmm. I mean, it's crazy. If you think about even just at a at a country music concert, if somebody would have pulled out a weapon, you've got a room full of 100,000 people in there, and probably at least half of them normally carry a weapon, and they don't have them because you, you wouldn't let them bring them in. So how are, how are we to defend ourselves? More yeah. than that. Well, and this is the thing that's always kind of stuck with me, is the fact that they, well, and it's not everywhere. I know some school districts and, and places have allowed it, but there's this thing there's in people's mind where the teachers or the principals or, you know, whatever, they're not allowed to get get their uh, certificate or go, you know, go to a, even if you make the rules really stringent and you say, okay, you got to go to the, shooting range this many times and you got to be proficient with your weapon and we're actually going to make it like a very strict thing how many teachers would probably volunteer to do that probably a lot Mm -hmm. because they would want to be trained and they would want to be well equipped this is the exact same training that we put our troops through the exact same training that we put our police officers to Mm -hmm. and and the thing is is when you hear, let's put these teachers through this, everybody says, no, 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 no. We don't want to do that. That's dangerous. We want to leave it to the professionals. Well, the professionals are only professionals because we've all agreed on it. I don't know 
what the standard of the police department is and how well they're making that standard. Mm -hmm. I don't know if these cops are doing regular uh, live fire exercises and uh, doing, um, you know, active shooter trainings. I'm assuming that there are in some of the larger departments, but the less funded uh, police departments don't have the capacity or the ability to train at that level. I mean, we're talking active shooter uh, simulated walkthroughs of, of a building is terrifying. Mm-hmm. I mean, you've got, you could have a threat come from any angle. If you've ever been in a school, I mean, you could come from anywhere. There's classrooms everywhere. There's closets, there's bathrooms there. I mean, you're talking, they could come from four different hallway, you know, it just mm-hmm. depends on the school, but there's, there are many opportunities for a police officer to get shot or shoot a kid or not ha- wouldn't it be better for the people that work there that know where all the classrooms are that know where the office is that know, you know what i'm saying that mm-hmm. know where all the kids are at that time wouldn't it be better for them to be well trained well equipped mm-hmm. and prepared for this type of a situation but nobody wants to do that Nobody well, wants to talk I about I remember it. in our concealed carry class that we did, the very first thing that the lady said was, let me just explain this to you. If you ever pull out your weapon and shoot it anywhere, you will be sued. That was the very first thing she said. Like, this is a big deal and you will get sued. Whether you're in the right or whether you're in the wrong, you're, there's going to be repercussions. That was the, And she hammered that home the whole time, like, this you you do not just pull out your weapon and even flash it around or you will get sued like it's a big deal mm-hmm. yeah i mean typically if you're going to pull that trigger even if it is um completely justified somebody broke into your homes trying to murder you whatever completely justified you're still going to jail right in a lot of states, mm-hmm. you're still going to jail and you're, there's still going to be a huge investigation and all that. Now, you may not stay in jail for very long, but there is going to, you are going to probably be leaving in cuffs. Right. And yeah. this is the opposition that, that law-abiding citizens have to go through in order to protect themselves, their family, and their children. Because... We think that it's so important that we will take the time out of our out of our night to go to these classes to learn. Mm-hmm. We go to the shooting range to train and to learn. Not that we're a militia, but we just want to be proficient. If we're going to carry, we want to be proficient. We want to right. we want to hit what we're intending to hit. Those type of things, and you still have hundreds and thousands of law-abiding citizens in America that are carrying guns on a daily basis, even though they have to jump through all of those hoops because it is that important to them. And it's worth it. And these are the people that are protecting America. Right. I mean, you go back to the the Uvalade shooting, Mm -hmm. and you were talking about the police officers. Mm -hmm. Well, those guys didn't even go in the building. They you know, they, these are trained police officers and they didn't run to help anybody. Yeah. So yeah. Who's really protecting us? The people who are responsible gun owners of this country are the ones who are truly protecting us. Yeah. Yeah, The other thing I thought was odd was how quickly they released the body cam footage of those police officers. Mm -hmm. Like, did you guys think that was super weird? It was like within an hour yeah. yeah, they had put out the body cam footage of these officers, and I'm like, well, shoot, they just released the January 6th footage from that insurrection, you know? Like, how how yeah. did they even get it through the proper channels to release it to the media that quickly if it wasn't something that was already in motion? Mm-hmm. I completely That's agree. Just, so just keep that in the back of your mind. And again... We want to be really sensitive to the people. There are real victims here. There are people who lost their loved ones. But how did that happen so fast? I could not agree more. I thought it was super strange. I know we haven't gone into a ton of, like, gematria yet on our podcast, but um, there were some interesting number things going on, such as the address of the school, which was... 33 
spring hail or whatever it was. Mm -hmm. Um, the victims that, that were killed, there was three nine year olds and then three 60 year olds. Um, yeah, just some really, yeah. So Gematria is like a, it's not something that we believe in, but it's, it's something that they, that the darkness believes in. So the church of Satan and all of these people, numbers are very important to them. And also their season of sacrifice, which is, I know we haven't gotten into a lot of this stuff, but their season of sacrifice, it goes from March 22nd to May 1st, which is a very, you see a lot, you see a huge uptick in this kind of stuff during those times. But the gematria part is, is very interesting. So in a six, 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 you know, everybody knows the, the number of Satan or whatever, but if you take the nine and invert it, they, they do that. And it's and it essentially means the same thing. And it's so yeah, it was very suspect that the three child victims were nine, and the three adult victims were like sixty, sixty one, and sixty one. So mm-hmm. yeah, it's super interesting. And 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 when you get into the the Satanistic portion of what we talk about with the deep state and the. Rockefellers and the Rothschilds and these these bloodlines if you remember back they they're they're very satanic they're they're called luciferians that's that's who they serve is um the god of darkness uh in their mind and so they do rituals and they have certain times that they do them as Kristen was uh, saying and they have um symbolism and things that they put into these false flag uh, type sacrifice ceremonies. And uh, you may not believe that. They may be a little too fringy for you, but just trust me that there's a lot of this stuff going on and a lot of uh, satanic uh, ritual abuse survivors out there that uh, we are actually going to have some on Mm -hmm. and talk about this and dive into this a little more because there are real people that are having real experiences and they they want to get that information out to the people because this is really going on satan has um whether whether he's manipulated these people into doing these things or whether these people are just evil within and of themselves and they've decided to worship him I don't know which was which, but the reality of it is they are doing sacrifices. They are hurting people, killing people on purpose, using symbolism and using things like Gematri, as as Bethany and Kristen were talking about, that tell us certain things. And if you know what you're looking for, you can see it. And so that's why the sixes are very weird and important. That's why the 33s and the address are very weird and important. Those things should stand out to you. Also, go back and look at the pictures of the of the um, shooter and pay close attention to the clothes. Pay close attention to the shoes. Mm-hmm. Pay close attention to everything that you see mm-hmm. because sometimes when they're filming things, if it's a false flag... Just like in a movie, you will see some things that don't make any sense or some things that might be different. And hopefully mm-hmm. our, our previous episodes on this stuff, like the Who Are They Part 2 and all of that, well, 1 and 2 really, but um, will open your eyes to, to start to see some of this stuff because knowledge is power. So if you know that this stuff is happening, then you have a little bit. So one of those things that I saw was in one shot the the gal the shooter had on bands mm-hmm. and flame, then flame bands and then in another shot she had on pumas. pumas pumas so two different two different types of shoes entering the building and exiting the building obviously she exited the building in a much different way than she entered but things like that to be aware of cuz i've seen several of them Mm-hmm. Like inconsistencies, and that there again, if they put out that body cam footage that quickly, and the security footage and in, yes. from inside the school, which is shocking. If you've ever tried to get security footage from anyone, like there was a guy a few blocks away from here who lost his cat, which is awful, and it was like my worst nightmare 
anyway, felt really bad for the guy. So he goes over to McDonald's because the cat's air tag was pinging over by the McDonald's. And just to try to look at the security camera to see if his cat was on the security camera, it took him three months. Mm -hmm. Three months. Yeah, that sounds about right. I mean, I was I was literally shocked when yes. when the body cam footage came out and the security footage came out. And yeah, she's wearing Puma's going in, and as she's going up the steps to the second floor, she's somehow magically got these flamed up vans on. I mm -hmm. mean. Super weird. Super weird. And Super things weird. to just keep in the back of your mind. That's what this whole show is about, is opening your eyes to see... You have to be able to see the evil in order to embrace the light. You have you know, you know, you have to know what you're fighting for. Mm -hmm. And it's like that saying where it says, I don't... You know, I'm not, I'm not fighting the people in front of me because I hate them. I'm fighting them because I love the people behind me. You know, that's the whole purpose of this is to arm yourselves with knowledge. Yeah. Because it, you feel helpless when something like this happens. You know, what What can you do? What can you say? Well, there's, honestly, there's not a lot. Pray for God to remove those scales from your eyes because as that starts to happen, you start to pick up on these things. And gematria and symbolism and colors, it's all a tool that, that I don't want to say the elite, but the, the, the elite. elite that's how they communicate to each other. Right. We're really not supposed to know about it, but there's been enough people who have dug into it that realized, hey, there's a lot of these weird numbers and colors. and But it's actually how they communicate with each other. Right. And we, and we will have an episode later on about some of the symbolism and some of that because it is really important. And once you start to see it, you start to go, oh. And then you start to connect the dots with the gematria and with the time of the season that we're in, you know, dates-wise, like... It all starts to make sense. So, um, but I did have a Bible verse I wanted to read because, you know, you do get sort of, uh, at least for me, I always just put, put myself in that situation and I can't even like fathom what, the, what these parents and what these family members have gone through. And just the other kids that are, were in the building. I mean, just the trauma of all of it, you know, it's, it's awful. But in Romans 12, 19, it says, Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave it to the wrath of God, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. So it's that, it's not up to us. You know, mm -hmm. as much as it, it, it pains us to know that this stuff happens, it's, vengeance is the Lord's. Yep. And we know that our God is a God of love, but also a God of justice. Yep. So one day again jesus we're ready for you if you want to come down now yeah we have a warrior god i don't um i don't mince words when i when i tell people we have a god of justice and there is going to come a day when these bloodlines these these luciferians these people that are carrying out these false flags and uh, school shootings all these different things they they will have a day of reckoning mm -hmm. and that day is going to come and it might be here sooner than we think, but we need to remember that we have to put our focus on the thing that matters. And that's Jesus. Mm -hmm. We have to put our focus on the thing that matters, which is to be kind to each other, to mm -hmm. love each other. As Jesus was saying to his disciples and trying to teach those, anyone that would listen, you know, he would wash people's feet he would go out of his way to make people feel comfortable. He told his disciples to turn the other cheek, you know, to go the extra mile, all of those things. These are teachings from our God telling us to be good to each other. And in this time of hardship where people are going through some hard times, it's not fair to say, oh, that was all bullshit. That was all a uh, false flag and blah, blah, blah. That, that's not what we want to do. We want and to have say, it one side pointing to the other, you know, because you have the, the folks that pipe in and they're like, oh, we need to have stricter gun laws. And then you have the other people that come in from the other side and they're like, no, we need to arm everybody. And, you know, while all of that, you know, we fall in in one category or the other for the most part, everybody does. But yeah, we just need to find balance. Yeah, there has to be balance. And that remember the victims. Remember the people in the in the middle that didn't have a say. All the all those people that didn't they didn't get a vote. They don't fall into one category category or another because they're nine, or they're 
you know, elementary age. And they, this is stuff that shouldn't even enter their worlds, but it does. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So have these conversations with the people around you. You know, if people don't want to talk about this, then, you know, are they really, are they really worth being around. I mean, we want people that are going to wake up to what's going on around us. This is atrocious that this stuff happens in the United States of America. And the rest of the world is looking at us like, what is going on? But if you look around the world, there's violence everywhere. Mm -hmm. And we need to just stop the violence. And it's not about gun control. It's not about all of it. It's about being nicer to each other. Well, it's and it's a, about, like we've said a million times, it's about arming people with the knowledge. Like, now is the time, you know, find a podcast if it's not this one. Find something and send it to the people so that they know what's going on. And they're not going to be as devastated by these things in the future because they they know why they're happening. And they also know that we serve a just God. And we serve a God that says, vengeance is mine. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid I mean, to share those videos yeah. on Instagram. and Yeah, we get, we've get we gotten some pushback on some of our episodes and some people that don't super love the flat earth stuff. And, you know, we don't even know where we fall in all of that. We, we're three individual people here that are doing this podcast together, and we don't always agree on this stuff. But the knowledge and getting the information out is the important part. It's not whether you agree on it. It's just getting the truth out there or letting you decide for yourself what the truth is. Yeah, that's the beauty of living in America, right? You can you can decide for yourself. That's the beauty of being a human, really, is that you should have a God-given right to decide for yourself what the truth is based on going through a list of evidence that you've compiled and put together over a period of your life so that you can understand the world that's around you. We understand that you're not going to believe everything that we talk about. We we started this podcast so that we could just be fringy and have some fun <laughs> and let you guys know what we're seeing because these conversations are so taboo and nobody wants to talk about it that we can't just have a conversation like the flat earth. We were talking about that or like gun control or politics. There's all of these things that are just off limits. And what we want to say is nothing should be off limits. We should be able to listen to each other and figure out where we agree and where we don't agree and why and compile enough evidence to where we can make our own judgment. Because the reality is, is when Jesus comes back and all is revealed, that's when we're going to know without a shadow of a doubt what the truth is. But if you do some research, you'll find that there's a lot more truth out there than you think there is. Right. But suppressing people from talking and having fringy conversations is a good way to keep this stuff in the darkness. And, you know, where there's where there's light, there can't be darkness. So that's, you know, and that's why we're doing what we're doing. That's right. Yeah, We know that there's a spiritual battle taking place oh, yeah. that we can't see. And I think sometimes people forget that. So... You may not see the battle that's happening between Satan and God, but it's happening. Oh, yeah. So we got to arm ourselves. Yep. That's right. Amen. Amen. Word up. All right, y'all. We hope you have a great rest of your week. We have a new episode coming out on Sunday with From the Shadows podcast. Yeah. We had an awesome conversation with Shane over there. We're so excited to introduce you to the paranormal range. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Kristen's all about that paranormal. That's, that's more what I like. It's so yeah. it, it's all about me. Remember, let's yeah. not forget. If you want to talk about ghosts or Bigfoot or the Dog Man or Mothman or I'm anything like it. that, she's all in. And that's what our next episode this Sunday <laughs> is going to be going into. So stay tuned for that. Um, thanks again, guys, for tuning in. Um, we're 
we're loving all of the interaction that we're getting on the yes. questions mm -hmm. uh, on Spotify down below. There's questions and polls that we're putting on there. Um, we're loving all the interaction that we're getting on there. Um, also, we're getting messages from people, which is awesome. We love to interact with our community. So uh, let's make this a thing. Reach out if you uh, if you want to get in contact with us. We would love to hear uh, from you, hear about your stories, all those things. Mm -hmm. We want to get friendly with everybody. That's how weird we are. So come back on Sunday for that episode. And until then, stay friendly, my people.